My name is Pam Drake. I'm the head golf professional here at the Randolph Golf Complex. Uh, here at the Randolph course, I've been about nine months, and previous to that, I was at Fred Inc. Golf Course for eight years. Get there. I'm originally from Denver, Colorado. Grew up playing junior golf in the state of Colorado, and then came to Tucson to uh, attend the University of Arizona. Well, I had roommates like Annika Sorenstam, so I uh, didn't travel much with the team, but I got to practice on a, on a daily basis with a lot of the best in the world. My family all played. Uh, my parents played, my brother played, so I tagged along and played too. What I like about golf is the competitiveness, but it's all on you. You don't have to rely on team members and, and whatnot to play. You can come out and play by yourself. Um, if you have a bad shot, you only have yourself to blame. For perfectionists, it's very difficult. They figure they're athletic, they can just, you know, looks easy, the ball's just sitting there, that, you know, they can do it. If you're just beating yourself up over every shot not being within three feet of the hole, you're probably not going to enjoy it and last very long. It's very easy to be hard on yourself, and you just got to have your own internal victories. You, you have this hole, and the best score you've ever had on it is a six, and you have a five, then you've achieved a new goal. But if you just have your own internal goals and, and compete against yourself, then I think uh, you can play it for a lifetime and enjoy it. The fundamentals are a key to playing good golf. Uh, everyone's looking for that consistency. That's the two things when they come to a lesson. I want to hit it straighter and I want to be more consistent. You have to have a swing that repeats in order to, to have that consistency. So ball striking, squareness of hit is important. I definitely start with some lessons, get some good proper fundamentals. We're just off of the green. So we're faced with a little chip and run type shot. Uh, we have a little bit of grass yet that we need to carry and then the rest of the time it'll just roll like a putt. Um, ideally we want to get the ball to carry and land onto the putting green and then the rest of it will roll towards the hole. Uh, so we're, we're not looking to hit anything very high, but just something to get it on the green. It'll have the truer roll and be able to just roll right towards, towards the cup. So to, in order to do that, we're going to set the club face. And I like to use a putting grip. So the same grip that I used for my putting stroke, I'm going to use here. With, with the finger down on my left hand, uh, index finger, it kind of stabilizes things and it doesn't allow the wrist to break. Um, I'm also not going to wear my golf glove in this shot because I want to get a feel. With this shot, I want to feel the distance that I'm going to try and hit it. We don't want to use a very wristy stroke because that will make it very inconsistent. We kind of have everything locked in, our wrist won't break down, and, and the stroke will be more of a pendulum from the shoulders. So we're looking for a very firm hand and th that way I can stay very solid with uh, my, my hands and, and not use any wrists. So as we set up to this shot, we want to set the loft of our club face. We're going to position it kind of towards the back of our stance. From here, we're going to have our weight leaning towards our front leg on our, our left foot. By having our weight on our front leg, that's going to allow us to hit down into the ball, which will pop it up and then let it roll the rest of the way. So, but we hit all of our chips with a downward blow. Depending on the length of shot that you have, the distance that we're going to hit it is going to be controlled by the amount of backswing that we use. We're looking to hit a lower rolling type shot. So we're going to have our hands more in front of, of the golf ball, like a forward press, which is de-lofting the club. This would be a standard loft for a sand wedge. For this shot though, we're going to have the handle in front, so now we have less loft in the club face. Our ball position will be towards the back of our stance. Our weight will be towards our front left foot. From here, we can just now make a simple pendulum stroke, get it on the green, and then just let it roll towards the hole. And we want to leave ourselves a nice little short tap in for the next shot. I hope these chipping tips will help you the next time you're out at the links, help lower your scores, and make the day more enjoyable.
I like immediate gratification. <laughs> Are we supposed to admit that in life? <laughs> it's a darker tone, and then I'll start working in the, the aqua and the lighter tones from that to give it reflection, because water's depth comes from the reflection in the sky. I'm a painter, and I'm translating painting uh, my paintings into another medium. So I'm doing lily pads uh, and water scenes in, uh, in a glass medium. Now I'm working on the water. Here's some water drops on water. I like to expand to different mediums because it opens my mind. And um, that's really important for an artist that you don't get into one idea for too long, that you, start, that you work and you refresh constantly. You know, part of it's a learned technique. I mean, everyone, a lot of people think that you're born with a talent and that's it, that's it. but it's not completely true. A lot of it's learned. Actually, my father uh, was an illustrator at one point in his life. And he used to take me to the zoo to paint, uh, actually to draw, so he could draw. So I started quite young, and then I went to art schools in different places around the world. Well, unfortunately I lost him when I was in my 20s, but I think he's always watched me paint, especially in the circus things. The circus paintings, I've got a lot of acrobats and clowns and tightrope walkers, which is kind of maybe a little bit like life. There. That almost looks like a wave, doesn't it? <laughs> well, I uh, grew up in Texas, and then I lived in Italy for eight years, and in New York City for um, 16 years, and then here. And I kind of look at the desert as having, as being a big sculpture garden. I love the cactus and the, and the vegetation here. You know, I think everybody juggles so many things in life that I look at a, a circus and I've always thought it was a paradox for, or a, um, an analogy for how we live. You know, you show one face, if you're a clown, to the, the world and another one just uh, um, when you unveil yourself, you're, you're uh, back to normal. Go for that one. I'm lucky I did cut myself then. I did. Mm, well, yeah. Life is pretty unpredictable, isn't it? You never know where you're going to be or what you're going to be doing next. I mean, you can plan, but it doesn't usually happen, or it doesn't always happen. Where'd you, you get a wig like that? You, you figure it out. I was born in 20. If you can get that bitter out of there. All right, let's bring it home. My name is Clarence Fieber. I'm 86 years old. Yeah, we're ready to take on the Rockies as soon as they get old enough. <laughs> I started catching when I was 16, so that's 70 years I did some catching. <laughs> Trouble is, we can't stand around waiting for them. <laughs> My name is Jack Lickman. Come on, guys, get your I usually under. wind up in short field, sometimes outfield. My age is 80. I just turned 80. Jack Glickman, short field, Don Wood, short field, and Archie, left field. I've been with the Tots 24 years. Just like my wife says to me, Clarence, when are you going to just go twice a week? Go three. That's the way to look them over. I'm very fortunate to be playing with a bunch of fellows that are pretty decent and easy to get along with. I was born in 20. Let me you, see. You figure it look out. At that. Where'd you, you get a wig like that? You, you figure it out. I was born in 20. If you can get that bitter out of there, then... We glued that on about 10 years ago. <laughs> That's a lot of bunk. That's a lot of bunk. Oh. 
you you want to play baseball? All you have to be is 60 years old, and we'll we'll take you on, and you uh, just enjoy it, you know. That's in there. That's in there. Oh. There's nobody that comes out here with any thought of being superior to anybody else. They all come out there and they do the best job they can and we all get along together. Come on, keep coming. You're on. Watch third, watch third. Uh, this organization is a wonderful thing for everybody. I think probably even though I enjoyed my years in business, I think uh, I enjoy this even more. And if I was back in New York where I come from, I probably don't think, it, I, I don't think there'd be anything like this around to go to. So. I just feel feel very fortunate to be here. And I love the game. Well, it's it's my life. Get off the couch, Tucson. Get active.